Shiloh 2018. Please let's listen. Let's listen to our names. Once you hear your name, please come out and share your testimony with God's people. Number one, Karo Tomanya Churamya from Ghana. Please come out. Dignes Amadi Chamaka. Dignes Amadi Chamaka. Ike Osad Osadebe. Ike Osadebe, please come out. Ruth Ambi, please come out. Samito J. Moses E. Advance Ehokuya, please come out. Mrs. Bolarinde Blessed. Miss Bolarinde Blessed. And Clement Lizzie. Clement Lizzie. Bolarinde Blessed. Evans Ehawai. Samito J. Moses. Ruth Amber. Ike Osadebe. Dignes Amadi Chiamaka. Karu Tomanya. Please, you start with your name and tell us in one minute. I came here, I couldn't see. After the word or after the anointing, I began to see. Praise the Lord. Did we understand? Hallelujah. My name is Caroline Tomanya from Ghana. I was here yesterday. I've been having challenges with my legs. And I came for the healing section. After prayers, uh, we had anointing. Thereafter, I have serious vibration in my two legs. My knees were twisted, so I find it difficult to walk. But after the, the, bridge, the, the vibration, the, I started walking. I give glory to God. Hallelujah. 41 years twisted leg healed. My name is Ruth Ambi. I was in the class yesterday by healing class. I was sick, hepatitis for two years. Then I anointed myself with anointing. Then I went for the test. I was negative. I give you all the glory. Hallelujah. Two years of hepatitis. Be clear off. Ike Osadebe. I'm from River State. I've had 17 and a half years attack, spiritual attack. I have voices ministering to me constantly, 24 hours. I was starting to put around my chest, making me feel uncomfortable. He said, this prayer, part of it left me. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 17 years spiritual attack gone after yesterday prayers. Give Jesus a big hand. Praise the Lord. My name is Mrs. Bolarin de Bless. For the past two years now, I've been having migraine headache. And it uh, gets to the point that the thing started affecting my sight. So the kind of drugs that were prescribed for me, in fact, the money that would take me in a year to get those drugs, is not something to talk about. So I made up my mind that I was going to come for Shiloh, that I know that when I get here, my healing will be sure. Just a few days to Shiloh, my three kids also, they started having challenge on their heads. Even the last one, I have to t- take her from the hospital, and I said we are coming from Shiloh. So yesterday, after the healing program, the man of God talked about headache. And at that point, my head was aching me that I can't even see. I have to put on my glasses. But immediately, that administration, the headache stopped. From that yesterday to now, that was all. And my three kids also that I came with, especially the last one that was so weak, she has been shouting hallelujah there since. God just healed me and my three kids like that. So God be the glory. Put your hands together for that. My name is Evan Soenzoa. I'm bringing really for LFC Bini. So yesterday was my first time of coming to healing and deliverance uh, class. So as I was seated there, uh, man of God prayed, moving objects will leave your body. The moving objects in my body for since two years now. Just silly since I slept like a baby yesterday and woke up early this morning. Just want to thank God to God mighty for doing it. Hallelujah. Two years moving objects stopped. Praise the Lord. Praise Master Jesus. I'm, I'm here in behalf of my father. My name is Happiness. My father's name is Semite J. Moses. 
Yesterday we came here and he received instant miracle. By right, paralysis for three years. Before we came here, the whole of this part of the body was stiff. It was in this morning service. He now told me, he touched me and he said, look at my leg. I cannot bring it. And as of yesterday, before we left this, when we left this place, I just got him a place to rest, to sleep before I could come back. And he slept like a baby. When I came back, I saw him sitting down. And I said, who supports you? He said he, he, he stood up on his own. I just God, give God the glory for what he has done for my father here. Put your hands together for Jesus. He is the healer. Make it louder and louder. Today is your own day. Because these testimonies are significant that your own will happen today. And so shall it be. Shiloh 2018. Praise the Lord. In a short while, the world will be coming again. We have heard the testimony of some people of yesterday. And I know yours is next in the name of Jesus. You have to have an expectation to meet up what your desire is. You have to be focused when the world comes. Don't be distraction in the name of Jesus Christ. In Proverbs 23, 18, it says, For surely there is an end, and the expectation shall not be cut off. Now, let's be on our feet right now. Let's begin to give God thanks. Desire that your expectation. Ask God that I'm here again today. I'm not going back the same way I came in. God has touched many. My own story is the next in the name of Jesus that I'm going to share my testimony. By the time the world come, that word, he said he sent the word and the word healed them. Wherever you are, toward the back, at the front, the world will touch you. The world will heal you. Desire that your expectation again. Ask God for why are you here? Ask God that my desire shall be met. Today is the day. It is the same day. Today is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. And we shall rejoice and be glad. The same God of yesterday and today and tomorrow is here again on this mountain. You are not going back the same way you come in. He says, surely there's an end. There's an end. That your desire, just a hand. That testimony is coming out today. And your expectation on this mountain shall not be cut off. Lift up that your voices. Lift up that your voices. Ask God with a desire in your heart. Ask God that I'm here in this hour. The hour has come to liberate me from the oppression of the devil. And you have sent that word that is coming forth. The word is coming. The word of healing. The word of breakthrough. The word of testimony. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will not miss that word. Lift up your voices. Ask God for that your desire. Ask God for that your desire. You are here to be touched. You are here to be healed. You are here to be blessed. You are not going by the same way. That my expectation is for today. It shall not be cut off. I make up my mind of what I desire. On this mountain... On this Shiloh Grand, on this mountain, I'm changing my level. I'm moving to another level. God of Bishop David Yodepo is going to touch me. He's going to move me. I'm moving ahead. This is the day the Lord has made. Lift up your voices. Lift up your voices. Ask God for that your desire. Ask God for that your desire. There's an end for all my heart. I'm here to be blessed. I'm here to be touched. The testimony is replicating already. I'm going to be touched today again. And I'm going to share my testimony. Begin to give God thanks. Begin to give God thanks. Begin to give God thanks in expectation of your what is going to happen to you. In expectation of what is going to happen to you. Give him thanks. Magnify his holy name. Exalt him. He is the same today. That I'm going to be touched. Thank him in advance. Thank him for what he has going to do. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. With a heart, with a clap of free.
Let's welcome the God servant in our midst to deliver the word again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now listen to this. The Bible says in Hebrews 11.6 He that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Now, this is what it means. That anyone coming to God must come with a notion that what is coming for is done. Anyone coming to try God never gets anything out of God. Anyone coming to see if God will do it or not never gets anything done. Coming to... Now, now, listen to me, listen, please. Whatever anyone has will never, ever, ever be a challenge to God. Can I say this? What can be wrong with your car that will scare Toyota? Toyota made your car. And now you are now carrying your car there because something is wrong with it. What can ever, ever be wrong with your Toyota car that will scare Toyota manufacturing company? And they made it. If they have to break it down, rearrange it, they will do it. So there is nothing you came in with with here now that can scare God. No, 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 no. There is nothing. Is somebody hearing me? The approach to God is having a consciousness of it is settled. Having a consciousness of it is done. If you don't feel like that, you might just go the way you came. How many people have been healed already here? Let me see your hand. (laughs) How many people know that their case is a walk over here? Now let me see your hand. Come and lift up your hand and thank God for it. From the depth of your heart. From the depth of your heart. Thank God for your own particular case. Because it is settled. Thank you Jesus. For settling my case. Adego sigalo shadiago sege. Nane kobo sikalaba hika kote kele gosiha. Ididu siado rokosi kalaka makika kotekete. Aya bota na kaika kotekele dosiha. Ide gozi galaga higa kotekele gosi edo do boborobo shiha. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, whatever you have thanked God for, it is done already. How many of you know that when you are asking somebody for a thing and you tell him thank you in advance, even if he doesn't want to do it, shame will catch him. Is it true or not? He won't know when he will give it to you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And that's the mystery here. We have given God thanks. That means God is committed. That means your case is settled. 
you shall not leave this place without your honor. Every one person here, every one person here, not one person will go back the way he came. In the name of Jesus, please put your hands together for the Lord as you take your seat. Listen to this very attentively. Yesterday, I said here, I kept hearing the word edict, edict. And we have seen all manner of mysterious healings. Yesterday, there were two cases of 30 years migraine healed. You had one again now of someone who had migraine with the children. And all of them cleared at once. Now, that tells you that something is here. In case you are still looking for something to convince you, you may never get anything out of here. Somebody stood here now and said, 41 years, twisted leg, healed. She walked here with her leg. We saw three cases of uh, wheelbarrow, uh, wheelchair, standing up here yesterday. And we had someone testify of three years complete paralysis healed. Now, if you are still not convinced, I don't know what more you need. Are you hearing what I'm saying? If you go home the way you came, then it is your fault. Is somebody following me? Now, let me say this. I have a conviction from God that by the anointing, He said to me that many people's cases here is a misery. That is a misery of the devil. It's something that does not answer to normal approach. That can be understood, but yet you are suffering it. But the misery of God is the answer to the misery of Satan. Now listen here. You will not need to know how it will go. You will just see that it has disappeared. As soon as you are anointed, as soon as you are anointed, you will just find out it's no more. You will just discover it's no longer there. Every growth in the body will disappear here today. Every moving object in the body will disappear here today. Whatever can be said to be a misery of the devil that followed anyone here by the mystery of God, every one of them will die here. The mysteries of God is the answer to the miseries of the devil. There are very many cases here that has to do with diabolical things. Miseries. You just woke up and it's there. You don't know why and you can't explain. You have prayed, you have done your best, but yet it's still there. It's a misery. And it's siphoning money off your pocket. It's putting you under intense pressure and pain daily. It's snuffing life out of you gradually. The end point of misery is to kill you. Behind every misery, there is a devil assigned to see to your hand. But hear me, behind the mysteries of God is the Holy Spirit. The power of the highest. And as you are anointed today, except if God is not God, but hear me, If God is God and is the one we serve, if he gave this mystery to his servant, Bishop David Oyereko, then today, today, this hour, you are walking out free. Today, this hour, you are walking out free. In the name of Jesus, please have your seat. Yesterday, we spoke about 
recognizing the fact that the price for your total health has been paid. And today we move on to part two of it. Recognizing that violent faith is the key to instant miracle. If you know the price has been paid, then what do you do? You go and take what has been paid for. If you know that the price has been paid, then what do you do? You rise and take what belongs to you. God has already given. It is now your turn to take. It won't take for you. Many people are praying here. Oh God, can't you see what I'm going through? Listen to me. God knows what you are going through. He already gave. He gave it before you began to go through. The reason you are going through is because you are not aware he gave. So the beginning is awareness. Now, 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 listen, listen to this, listen to this. The Bible says the whole world is in darkness. In darkness, everything is covered. Look at me now. This is my handkerchief. I cover this thing. It is there, but it is covered. You will pass by it as if it does not exist. Why? You can't see it. The whole world is in darkness. Everything about you is here already. Everything, most things you are looking up to God for, they are already here, but they are covered. They are in darkness. What the word of God does is to tell you what is inside the cloth. What the word of God does is to empower you to take away the covering. Now, when the covering is taken away, when you know what is inside the cloth, and you know it is what you need, it is what you are looking for, what do you then do? I say, what do you do? I'm not hearing you at all. Say it like you mean it. You take it. You take it. Now, can I say this to you? <laughs> it's not a statement. It's not an anti-Bible statement. But you want to hear this? God will not be the reason for your healing. He already healed you. You won't need to call on God to take your healing. He already gave. He won't give again. Are you listening to what I'm saying? He gave already. The problem has never been with God. The problem is with us. He gave it. You are the one who has not taken it. He gave it, you are the one who has not taken it. And why have you not taken it? Ignorance is the first reason. You didn't know. Now, now that you know, and uh, hear me, Satan is playing around you on the premise that you don't know. Look at it this way. It is your thing. It has been given. Are you hearing me? 
It is as big as this. But it is covered. Satan knows. And then he gives you this small one to replace this one. Since you didn't know, you will take the small one and assume that is all. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Man, why this much has been given by God? So the beginning is awareness. That's why he that cometh to God must believe that he is and is a rewarder. Must believe. And the reason why you will believe that he is and is a rewarder is not going to be he is. Is not going to be he is. Now listen to this. When Moses was being sent to the Israelites. And Moses asked God, who do I tell them sent me? God told him, tell them I am that I am. What does that mean? I am anything to everybody. How you think me is how you see me. How you imagine me is how you encounter me. That means... Your healing depends on you. It doesn't depend on God. Whatever you get out of here depends on you. It doesn't depend on God. The word for headache already went forward yesterday. It is still on today. Any case of migraine that still remains here is because you chose to take it home. And I gave another word now that this is God's mystery. Answer to every misery. Whatever your own case be, if it be a misery, if you still go home with it, then you chose to go home with it. You may have had that problem for 20 years. God does not need 20 years to save you. Right now, on this moment, right now, in this place, there is a woman called the woman with the issue of blood. Who the Bible says had gone to many doctors. And she was not made better. For 12 years, she went through pain, went through her. She had lost much blood. And then she had. She became aware. She didn't know before. She heard that Jesus was coming. What? Who is Jesus? The one healing everybody. Uh -uh. She didn't know before, but then she knew. She became aware. It all begins with awareness. And when you are now aware, how do you respond to the information you just got? How do you respond? So she left where she was without invitation. I can imagine our family members begging her, rest now. Rest. Doctor say you shouldn't go anywhere. Rest. And I can imagine her saying, no, this is my last chance. And the scripture says she pressed with her last strength. She was not expecting to come back the way she was going. Because she knew she could die in the process. Until you come to a point where you are sure that you are sure, then you are not ready. Until you come to a point where you are sure that you are sure that you are sure. And of course, when you are sure that you are sure, how do you respond? You respond angrily. You respond with anger. Okay, listen to this. This thing has been covered. You have been looking for it for 20 years. You have suffered because you didn't have it. 
Now you know it is here and it has been here all along for the last 20 years. Now, how are you going to respond? Are you going to come gently, smiling? Uh, okay, this thing, okay. Is that how you respond? You will grab it. You will fly over it. Even, you will dive into it. Even if your life depends on it. 20 years suffering is enough. Are you hearing what I'm saying? That woman dived into it. Everybody stood on the line waiting for Jesus to touch. He said, for where? No way. Touch what? Whether he touched me or I touch him is the same thing. She said in her heart, she didn't tell anybody. If she told anybody, they would tell her, don't go. She jumped. She pulled his clothes. And power flew from Jesus into her. Do you know something? Jesus only knew when power flew. Now listen, Jesus, she didn't get Jesus' permission to get her healing. So if I tell you, God is not to blame. If I tell you, God is not the one you are waiting for. If I tell you that God won't be the reason, then I know what I'm saying. The answer is not in God's hand. It already has left God's hand. It's in your hand. It's in your hand. I say it is in... It is in what? And she got her healing. There's another case in Mark chapter 2 of a paralyzed man. His body was paralyzed, but his head wasn't paralyzed. Somebody said, if you cannot fly, he said, run. If you can't run, walk. If you cannot walk, crawl. By all means, keep moving. When you stop moving, that's when you are truly dead. And that man asked them to carry him to Jesus' crusade. And when they got to the crusade, the place was packed full. The place was packed full. There was no space inside. And the man said to them, come, there may be no space to enter, but no one is sitting on the roof. Take me through the roof. I can imagine them telling him, hey, the house is not our own. How do we remove the roof of somebody else's house? And I can imagine him answering them, don't worry. When I am healed, I will pay them. And I can imagine them saying, the moment we drop you inside, how do we get you out? He said, don't worry. I may go in on stretcher, but I'm coming out with my legs. That is what they call expectation. That's what they call violence of faith. God has given, faith is the hand that you used to take. Faith is the hand that takes things from God. He that cometh to God must believe that he is and is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. I didn't come here to try God today. I came here to take what God has given. And the moment they dropped him inside... Nobody asks, hey, why did you remove the roof? Nobody asks, hey, why did you come from the roof? Jesus didn't complain. <laughs> he didn't complain. You know something? I found out something in the Bible that God will never ask you how you got there. But he will give you what it takes for you to get there. That is what is available in the place. One day God told me, he said anytime you see anyone flying to where you need to get to, just hold his cat. As he's flying, he will take you along. When he arrives, you have arrived too. 
Nobody will ask you, how did you get here? They will only celebrate that you came to. So are you hearing? Because many of you, your head is calculating. How, how, how will this thing happen? Okay, how, how will I be free from this thing? Okay, how will this thing... Uh, how, your head is too small to calculate how. That's why they call it mystery. All you need to do is carry a picture of how you want to be free and pursue it with all your strength. Now listen, the God who made a 90 year old woman carry a child for 9 months, there is no doctor anywhere living or dead that can explain such phenomenon. The God who impregnated a virgin, the virginity was still intact. For her to give birth, they have to break the virginity. It was still there. How did it pass? Where did it pass through? It's too much for your head to calculate. The God who called Peter out of the boat. And Peter walked on water. Okay, you did physics. Tell me how that can happen. There is nothing on earth that can explain it. You must understand that there will always be things beyond your head to explain. If you can explain the problem you have, you won't be here seated. It's beyond your explanation. It's beyond your comprehension. That's why you have come to God. Many come to God and they are still pulling themselves back. Many come to God and they still want to tell God how he should do what he should do. So he leaves you to your matter. Is, are you hearing what I'm saying? I'd like you to release yourself. I don't know what they have told you before, but let go. They told the woman with the issue of blood she would die. Twelve years she had been pursuing it, she didn't get it. And she was already dying. She had evidence to prove that what they said was true. Can you hear me this morning? We are fighting a fight of evidence. A fight of proofs. You have headache. You have body. Your body is hot. That is proof you have fever. And you are here. But God say, you don't have fever. Is somebody saying, God said, I took your fever. You now have a choice. Which evidence to accept? Which proof to align with? You now have a choice. That's why your healing is in your hand. The decision has to do with you. So you choose, if you choose to align with God's evidence, then what do you do? You begin to act. You begin to move according to the evidence you agree with. You can feel addict. You can feel the fever. But the other evidence does not work with feeling. It begins with awareness. It continues with believing. And then it goes on to taking steps. Then you will stand up. Then you will move. Like someone who has no fever. The one who has fever will lie down. You can't be healed if you still accept or be accepting. Sorry, oh. Sorry, oh, you hear? But lie down. Is somebody following me? God has done it. He's not going to do it. You came to take what has been done. It's not coming. It already has come. It's not going to happen. It already has happened. 
And right there in your seated position, some people already are collecting their own. You're already taking it. You're already taking it. I say you're already taking it. I say you're already taking it. I say you're already taking it. I said you're already taking it. I said you're already taking it. They call Satan the power of darkness. What does it mean? Is the power that works in darkness. Let me give you an explanation. You want to make Eba. You need Gary. You need hot water. So, imagine if now you have Gary, you have water. But you are not allowed to make it hot. What happens? Then your desire for a bar has been completely crushed. Satan is the power that operates in darkness. Every one reason why you came here today is a product that happens in darkness. The word of God brings you awareness. It brings you light. When light comes, darkness is vacated. When darkness is vacated, then all the works of darkness are also silenced. In case your sickness is like ever, the power to make hot water has been taken away from the devil. He has the gari, but he can't make the eba. You know what that means? It means today is the last day you will ever hear of that sickness again. <laughs> Say with me, Satan has lost his power. <laughs> Say with me, I am free now. I am free now. I am free now. I am free now. In a moment, I'm going to ask you to pray. And you have to pray with violence to show that you are tired of that matter. To show that you are angry. You mean this thing has been given me since? And yet I am suffering it. Satan knows it that God has given it. He also knows that you have to take it yourself. He won't take it for you. That is why he blinds the eyes of people from seeing what God has given. Until you see it, you can't take it. The preaching of the gospel is to help you see it. There is no pastor in this world, even if his papa standing here now, he can't help you take it. He can only help you see it. And the moment you see it, now taking it is your responsibility. You take it by violence. You take it with anger. There's a story in Matthew 15 of a, 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 a woman, the, a, the Canaanite woman, the Bible calls her, who came to Jesus because she wanted her daughter to be healed. And Jesus said, hey, you are not in the list of those God sent me to. That is true. She said, yes, I'm not arguing. I agree. But there is one thing I know. I know the nature of God. I know the nature of God. Are you following what I'm saying? I want to see you. All the people around you say, you can't see him. He said he doesn't want to see anybody. He doesn't want to see anybody. But I know you, that the moment you see someone in need, ah. <laughs> so they say you can't see him. You can't see what? I carry my head, I carry my body, I push anyone just to make sure you see me. And I know the moment you see me, I know your nature. 
In the moment you see me, you will answer. It doesn't matter what anyone has said. The Canaanite woman say, hey, yes, what you are saying is the truth. But I have good news for you. I know God. I know him. He cares for the table. He also cares for under the table. You are talking about people who sit on the table. I know I don't have a seat there, but there is no seat under the table. It's free for all. It's free for all. Listen to me. Even if you are not in the merry list, you are in the favor list. You are in the mercy list. And the mercy list is a long one. It's a forever list. It's a list that can't be closed. Now, you know what that means? It doesn't matter what you have done. It doesn't matter why you are where you are. Are you hearing what I'm saying? God will heal you now. It doesn't matter what anyone has told you. That woman was not in the list, but she got it. (laughs) She got it. James said, anyone be sick, let him come. Let the elders pray for him. After he is healed, we will now ask him, what sin did you commit? Whatever is the stories that followed you here, put it aside. God is more interested in your deliverance than your stories. How many of you mothers are here? Your baby, two year old, one year old, went to play inside mud. The moment you see him, of course you are angry. But the first thing you do is take him out of the mud. Will you be beating him inside the mud? Except you're a witch. The first thing, you, no matter how angry you are, the compassion of a mother will take over. You take him out of the mud. You wash him from the mud before you start telling him, don't go there again. Are you hearing what I'm saying? What makes you think that God is a wicked God? He will never need to wait. You will never need to wait. Now is the acceptable time. Now is the time of salvation. Now is your season of healing. Rise up on your feet. How many believe their healing is here already? Listen to me. You are not only receiving healing, you are receiving health. That is after you are healed now, you will never need to see sickness again to forever. If you believe it is here, now begin to take it. Lift up your voice now. I want you to be violent. I want you to be hard. I want you to be violent in your approach. Let God know you are ready. Let God know it is now. Whatever it is, Whatever misery of the devil. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Remember, every case of migraine, every case of headache, in whatever form, has been taken care of already. And healings are taking place already. 
Now listen, two things here. I saw a man that cannot urinate. And God said to me, every case of kidney, every kidney case, no matter how bad it is, right now, in the name of Jesus, be healed now. That man that cannot urinate, the blockade is taken out of the way now. Second case, case of pains. Wherever the pain is, in the leg, specifically I saw pains at the back. At the back, on the leg, wherever the pain is, in the name of Jesus, every one such pain is taken away now. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Lift up your two hands. I release the healing virtues, the healing power of God in this place right now. Whatever you seek, take it. Take it. Take it. Receive it. Every kidney problem is healed. Every pain is healed. Blood ear. Blocked here. I saw blocked here now. Every partial hearing, every deafness, be healed now. <laughs> Lift up your two hands. Just take it. Just take it. Just keep taking it. Receive it now. God has given it. You take it. Take it. Take it. Take it. It is yours. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Mane ko si kalo baro de ko shiha, mati kalo bele ko ro ko si kele ko shiha, ate te ke 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 ke, ye ko to ko ro ko si kaka, mate mate, take it, take it, take it, take it now, receive it now, take it, take it, God has given it, you take it, receive it now, take it, take it, it is yours already. Receive it. Are ko sekete kete. Ye ko toko roko shika hika bata. That virtue is moving all over the place. It's moving all over the place. The power of God is here. Come and take it. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Just lift up your two hands and be quiet. Lord, I pray your power for healing that is here now move in the midst of this people. Just be quiet and lift up your two hands. And take, it is with the heart we take. Take it. Take it. Take it now. Take it now. Take it now. Maleko si kalo brado si hende. Ikete. Ina rushka hi hano. Take it. <laughs> it's happening all over the place. Take it. Take it. Take it. Ayakota ka hi kakote. Take it. Take it. Come on, have it. Have it. Have it. Take it. Take it now. Nothing stops you. Take it.